fellow project managers, you probably already know by now that the PMP exam is heavily agile these days. For that reason, not only do you need to know the terms in the Agile Practice Guide, you also need to know the wider body of Agile terms that float around out there. Concepts and terms that are not necessarily in the Agile Practice Guide, but are definitely possibilities on the exam. So why don't we jump into over a hundred terms from the world of Agile to equip you to better function on your PMP exam. Are you ready? Let's go. This is going to be a very quick run through. Number one, out of order, I have the term Agile. Why? Because of course we're talking about Agile. Agile is something you are, not something you do. If you take nothing else away from this particular slide, I would like you to take away that Agile is a mindset. It's not a checklist. It's not the methodology. It's not a set of rituals that we practice like blind bats in an alley, just doing what we have been instructed to do. No, no, no. This is where we actually know why we are doing what we are doing, how we are doing it. In Agile, we fail forward, we make mistakes, we learn, we gather data, empirical data is used in iterative planning. And that's what Agile is in an organic way. Let's go to our Agile practice guide. The PMI term this as a term used to describe a mindset of values and principles as set forth in the Agile manifesto. Let's go to our next term acceptance test driven development. And simply put, according to the PMI, it's a method of collaboratively creating acceptance test criteria that are used to create acceptance tests before delivery begins. Now we can expand that out and include other definitions of ATDD. Acceptance test driven development involves team members with different perspectives, customer development testing, collaborating to write acceptance tests in advance of implementing the corresponding functionality. When we talk about ATDD, the entire team gets together, they discuss the acceptance criteria for a work product, and then the team creates the tests which allows the team to write just enough code and automated tests to meet the criteria. For non-software projects, consider how to test the work as the team completes chunks of value. The next term here in the Agile Practice Guide is Agile Coach. This is someone who has knowledge and experience in Agile who can train, mentor, guide organizations through their transformation. The next term is Agile Lifecycle. It's an approach that is both iterative and incremental to refine work items and deliver frequently. The next term is the Agile Manifesto. This is the original and official definition of Agile values and the 12 principles. Agile Mindset, it's a way of thinking and behaving. The Agile Mindset embodies a focus on customers, teams, and those operating within that network. Agile practitioner, someone who practices agile in mind and who collaborates with like-minded colleagues. Agile principles, the 12 principles of the Agile Manifesto. Now it will be wrong for us not to cover this, so let's do it rapidly. Number one, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Number two, I'm going to truncate them. Welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Three, deliver working software frequently. Four, business people and developers must work together daily. Five, build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. Six, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. Seven, working software is the primary measure of progress. Eight, 
agile processes promote sustainable development. Note the word constant pace indefinitely. Nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. 10, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. 11, the best architectures, requirements and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. And 12, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective than tunes and adjust its behavior accordingly. Next is AUP, the Agile Unified Process. This is an offshoot of the Unified Process for software projects. It features more accelerated styles and less heavyweight processes than its Unified Process predecessor. The intent is to perform more iterative cycles across seven key disciplines and also to incorporate the associated feedback before formal delivery. The next term is Agilist. An Agilist is someone who is a practitioner of Agile. The next term is Anti-Pattern. An Anti-Pattern is a flawed work pattern that is unadvisable. It's a deviation from the norm to a modified but unfavorable, unproductive pattern. Anti-Patterns are common solutions to common problems where the solution is ineffective and may result in undesired consequences. The next term here is automated code quality analysis. This is scripted testing of the code for bugs and other defective code items. The next term is backlog. This typically refers to a product backlog, but in cases where you're working on a service or something else, you may call it a backlog to make it as agnostic as possible not necessarily scrum and could be fit into a Kanban discussion. So a backlog, typically a product backlog, is a list of the new features, changes to existing features, bug fixes, infrastructure changes, or other activities that a team may deliver in order to achieve a specific outcome. The product backlog is the single authoritative source for things that a team works on. That means nothing gets done that isn't on the product backlog. The PMI lists this as an ordered list of user-centric requirements that a team maintains for a product. Let's move on to our next one, backlog refinement. Backlog refinement is an ongoing team activity of collaboratively updating the product backlog via reprioritization, adding, deleting, rewriting stories, splitting and estimating. This practice ensures the backlog is always actionable. Let's read what the PMI say about it. The progressive elaboration of project requirements and or the ongoing activity in which the team collaboratively reviews, updates and rewrites requirements to satisfy the need of the customer request. Let's talk about BDD, Behavior Driven Development. Simply put by the PMI, it's a system and validation practice that uses test first principles and English-like scripts. Now, before we talk about English-like scripts, let's break down BDD a little bit more. It's a synthesis and refinement of practices stemming from TDD and ATDD. BDD augments TDD and ATDD with the following tactics. Apply the five whys principle to each proposed user story so that its purpose is clearly related to business outcomes. Thinking from the outside in, in other words, implement only those behaviors which contribute most directly to these business outcomes so as to minimize waste. Describe behaviors in a single notation, which is directly accessible to domain experts, testers, and developers, so as to improve communication and apply these techniques all the way down to the lowest level of abstraction of the software. And a huge shout out to our friends at the Agile Alliance. They never fail to give us great descriptions. And of course, that's why the PMI partnered with them 
to write the Agile Practice Guide. Blended Agile. Blended Agile is when you blend two or more Agile frameworks. For example, XP and Kanban. Blocker. A blocker can also be thought of as an impediment. An impediment is something that impedes the team's progress. Reading from the Agile Practice Guide definition, it's an obstacle that prevents the team from reaching its objectives, also known as a blocker. Broken comb. Broken comb refers to a person with various depths of specialization in multiple skills required by the team, also known as paint drip. In the paint drip effect, when you are brushing your paintbrush across the wall, many instances, one singular row of paint goes all the way down. And that represents a skill that is going all the way down in a lot of depth. But then you have other rows of paint that may not go all the way down and might be truncated. And you have some that go towards the middle and some that stay right at the top. That's just like a broken comb, also known as paint drip, showing that you could have broad scales, but not every single one of those is deep, also known as the paint drip. Burn down chart. The PMI defined this as a graphical representation of the work remaining versus the time left in a time box. When you look at the burn down chart, you're seeing the work remaining. Burn up chart is the next one. And the difference is it's a graphical representation of the work completed towards the release of a product, but you are seeing the work as you are getting it done. It is comforting to many teams to see work being accomplished rather than work remaining which could be demoralizing, but we should look at both, shouldn't we? Next, we have business requirements documents, BRD, and this is listing of all requirements for a specific project. The next one, the PMI have here is cadence, a rhythm of execution. Next, we have collective code ownership, a project acceleration and collaboration technique whereby any member is authorized to modify project work, a product or deliverable, thus emphasizing team-wide ownership and accountability. Continuous delivery, the practice of delivering feature increments immediately to customers, often through the use of small batches of work and automation technology. Continuous integration, a practice in which each team member's work products are frequently integrated and validated with one another. Cross-functional team, a team that includes practitioners with all the skills necessary to deliver valuable product increments. Crystal family of methodologies. A shout out to our friend Al, creator of Crystal, it's a collection of lightweight agile software development methods focused on adaptability to a particular circumstance. And while it's not used widely today, it has a lot of useful elements that companies still pick and place into other frameworks. Daily Scrum. When you hear Daily Scrum, you're thinking of a daily stand-up. The team meets daily for short meetings, which are typically held standing up face-to-face -to, -face to encourage brief sessions. This is not a status meeting, and we definitely don't want to get into that anti-pattern of it becoming a status meeting. So we only invite those team members, the team, the scrum team, that's who you want in attendance. Don't invite management, except you absolutely have to, except they're curious. This meeting is for people to ask quick questions that will allow them get the information they need or remove blockers. Long answers and discussions should have follow-ups after the meeting in smaller groups. The PMI defines this daily scrum as a brief daily collaboration 
in which the team reviews progress from the previous day, declares intentions for the current day and highlights any obstacles. The key question is, what have you accomplished since the last meeting to move us forward towards a sprint goal? What are you gonna do between now and the next meeting to move us closer to the sprint goal? Uh, which impediments are blocking your way? Definition of done, a team's checklist of all the criteria required to be met so that a deliverable can be considered ready for customer use. Definition of ready, a team's checklist for a user-centric requirement that has all the information the team needs to be able to begin working on it. DevOps, a collection of practices for creating a smooth flow of delivery by improving collaboration between development and operation staff, hence the term DevOps. Discipline Agile, a process decision framework that enables simplified process decisions around incremental and iterative solution delivery. Double loop learning, a process that challenges underlying values and assumptions in order to better elaborate root causes and devise improved countermeasures rather than focusing only on symptoms. DSDM, it's an agile project delivery framework. You don't hear too much of it, but it's a relevant one to look out for. English-like scripts. It means a programming language with a simple English-like syntax. Python, for example, is one of such languages and the script sounds almost like simple English when read. Epic. An epic is a large user story. Bear in mind the last two definitions are not in the Agile Practice Guide. Equivalent to Scrum Master. What do we mean by this? Equivalent to Scrum Master could mean someone who is a servant leader, but is not necessarily labeled as a Scrum Master. When we say someone is equivalent to the Scrum Master, bear in mind that in the world of Agile, there are many frameworks and methods, but Scrum is the only one that we use the label Scrum Master. So the equivalent of Scrum Master in that framework or method is what this refers to. Evolutionary Value Delivery, EVO. This is an Agile approach allowing teams to deliver more business value in less time as has been shown in numerous environments like projects for space, 40 year, 40 man year saved, which is huge, building automation and banking in waterfall projects, scientific research, as well as agile and scrum teams. The PMI simply defines this as openly credited as the first agile method that contains a specific component no other methods have the focus on delivering multiple measurable value requirements to stakeholders. The next one is Extreme Programming known as XP. It's an agile software development framework that aims to produce higher quality software and higher quality of life for the development team. XP is the most specific of the agile frameworks regarding appropriate engineering practices for software development. Simply described in the Agile Practice Guide, an Agile software development method that leads to higher quality software, a greater responsiveness to changing customer requirements, and more frequent releases in shorter cycles. Feature-Driven Development, FDD. It's a lightweight Agile software development method driven from the perspective of features valued by clients. Fit for purpose, a product that is suitable for its intended purpose. Fit for use, a product that is usable in its current form to achieve its intended purpose. Flow master, the coach for a team and service request manager working in a continuous flow or Kanban context, equivalent to scrum master. We covered that. Framework, a basic system or structure of ideas or facts 
that support an approach. Functional requirement, a specific behavior that a product or service should perform. Functional specification, a specific function that a system or application is required to perform. Hoshin Canry, this is policy management. It's a seven step process used in strategic planning in which strategic goals are communicated throughout the company and then put into action. The Hoshin Canry strategic planning system originated from post-war Japan, but has since spread to the US and around the world. Translated from Japanese, Hoshin Canry aptly means compass management. The individual words Hoshin and Kanri mean direction and administration respectively. The PMI simply defined this as a strategy or policy deployment method. Hybrid approach, a combination of two or more agile and non-agile elements having a non-agile end result. Impact mapping, a strategic planning technique that acts as a roadmap to the organization while building new products. Impediment, we've covered this. It's an obstacle that prevents the team from achieving its objectives. Increment, a functional tested and accepted deliverable that is a subset of the overall project outcome. Incremental life cycle, an approach that provides finished deliverables that the customer may be able to use immediately. Information radiator, another creation by our friend Al, Alistair Koba, and this reads, information radiator is a visible physical display that provides information to the rest of the organization, enabling up to the minute knowledge sharing without having to disturb the team. Another definition reads, it's a term for any number of visual displays which a team places in a highly visible location so that all members can see the latest information at a glance. Eye-shaped, well, we talked about the broken comb and paint drip. Well, eye-shaped is just one drip going down to the depth, but no broad set of scales. This refers to a person with a single deep area of specialization and no interest or skill in the rest of the skills required by the team. Iteration, a time boxed cycle of development on a product or deliverable in which all of the work that is needed to deliver value is performed. Of course, in the world of Scrum, you know that iteration is referred to as a sprint. Iterative life cycle, an approach that allows feedback for unfinished work to improve and modify that work. And if you're getting ready for the exam, you do know that the table breaking down iterative, incremental, and other life cycles is on page 18. Definitely one to master in your Agile practice guide. Kaizen events, events aimed at improvement of the system. Kanban board, a visualization tool that enables improvements to the workflow by making bottlenecks and work quantities visible. And of course you do remember to do, doing and done. You've seen that board before. The Kanban method is an agile method inspired by the original Kanban inventory control system and used specifically for knowledge work. Less large scale Scrum. It's a product development framework that extends Scrum with scaling guidelines while preserving the original purposes of Scrum. Lean software development. It has a rather risky acronym, but this means an adaptation of lean manufacturing principles. It's based on optimizing development time and resources, eliminating waste, and ultimately delivering 
only what the product needs. The lean approach is often referred to as MVP. You've heard it before, minimal viable product. The minimum viable product strategy in which a team releases a bare minimum version of its product to the market, learns from users what they like, what they don't, what they want to be added, and then iterates based on this feedback. Next, we have a simple term, life cycle. The process through which a product is imagined, created, and put into use. Manifesto. We have talked about the manifesto. We've talked about the 12 principles. Let's now address the four values very briefly. The four values are mentioned on page eight and they read, we are covering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there's value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. Next definition is one of mobbing, also referred to in the software world as mob programming. It's a software development method where the whole team works on the same thing at the same time in the same space and at the same computer. In the world of the PMI and the Agile Practice Guide, it's defined as a technique in which multiple team members focus simultaneously and coordinate their contributions on a particular work item. MVP, minimum viable product, we've talked about this already. This is the version of a new product which allows a team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about customers with the least effort. Organizational bias. The preferences of an organization on a set of scales characterized by following core values, exploration versus execution, speed versus stability, quantity versus quality, and flexibility versus predictability. Let's go to our next one, organizational change management, a comprehensive cyclic and structured approach for transitioning individuals, groups, and organizations from the current state to a future state with intended business benefits. Paint drip, we've talked about this already. Paint drip, broken comb, T-shaped, I-shaped, you should have all of these down. And these are skills represented by brush drawing of a horizontal stroke. Sometimes drips of paint accumulate and you know one row of that paint is gonna go all the way down while others are at different levels. And those levels represent different levels of scale but you want to have broad and deep skills in some and broad and enough to function. And that's what we mean by a team that can jump in to save team members when they are in trouble. You need those T-shaped skills or the paint drip or broken comb, whatever you refer to it as. I quite like the paint drip because it gives you an illustration that it's not just broad and one scale is all the way down. No, you have people who have two of the combs going all the way down. You have teams that have out of maybe 20, you have 10 really deep scales, or you have a, a team member with just three. Pair programming. Pair programming is an agile software development technique in which two programmers work together at one workstation one, the driver writes code while the other, the observer or navigator reviews each line of code. The two programmers switch roles frequently. The PMI referred to this in pair programming as pair work that is focused on programming. And that takes us to the next definition of pair work. As I described a technique for pairing two team members to work simultaneously on the same item. Pairing, pretty much the same thing. Personas, PMI referred to this as 
an archetype user representing a similar a set of similar end users described with their goals, motivations, and representative personal characteristics. Let's further expand this. The concept of personas was first introduced by Alan Cooper and it defines an archetypal user of a system, an example of the kind of person who would interact with it. The idea is that if you want to design effective software, then it needs to be designed for a specific person. Pivot, a plan course correction designed to test a new hypothesis about the product or strategy. To go a little bit further, look at this as a structured course correction to test a new fundamental idea about a product. Plan, do, check, act, PDCA. It's an iterative management method used in organizations to facilitate the control and continual improvement of processes and products. PSI, potentially shippable product increment in agile software development, a fully tested and usable version of a product that is produced at the end of each sprint. The agile practice guide remains mum on the potentially shippable increment, but we do know that this exists in the discussion of the exam. Predictive approach, an approach to work management that utilizes a work plan and management of that work plan throughout the life cycle of a project, also referred to as waterfall. Predictive life cycle, also referred to as waterfall. It's a more traditional approach with the bulk of planning happening up front. Product backlog already defined, an ordered list of user-centric requirements. Product owner, now this is one we should spend time on because a product owner is a very important team member. That is not to say all team members are not important, but the product owner stands out because we refer to them as the chief value officer. The product owner is accountable for maximizing the value of the product resulting from the work of the scrum team. How this is done may vary widely across organizations, so says the Scrum Guide. The product owner is also accountable for effective product backlog management, which includes developing and explicitly communicating the product goal, creating and clearly communicating product backlog items, and ordering backlog items, and ensuring the product backlog is transparent, visible, and understood. The product owner may do all the things I mentioned or may delegate some of those responsibilities. Regardless, the product owner remains accountable. Remember the word accountable from the racy chart discussion? Responsible, accountable. The responsible is the doer. The accountable passing the buck stops here. For product owners to succeed, the entire organization must respect their decisions. These decisions are visible in the content and ordering of the product backlog and through the inspectable increment at the sprint review. The product owner is one person, not a bunch of people. The product owner may represent the needs of many stakeholders in the product backlog. Those wanting to change the product backlog can do so by trying to convince the product owner. Progressive elaboration is our next one. And this is well known by a lot of you project managers. The iterative process of increasing the level of detail in a project management plan as greater amounts of information become available. PMO stands for Project Management Office. And when we talk about the Project Management Office from an Agile perspective, I would like to sensitize you to that narration in the Agile Practice Guide that talks about the role of the Project Management Office. It reads on page 82, an Agile PMO is multidisciplinary disciplinary. In order to support project specific needs, the PMO needs to be covenant in several competencies beyond project management itself. It reads, some organizations have been transforming their PMOs into agile centers of excellence. They provide services such as developing and implementing standards, developing personnel through training and mentoring, multi-project management, 
multi-project management, facilitating organizational learning, managing stakeholders, recruiting, selecting, and evaluating team members, and executing specialized tasks for projects. So it is important for your exam when we talk about Agile and the PMO, the PMO exists to shepherd business value throughout the organization. And it might do this by helping projects achieve their goals. Sometimes the PMO should educate. Know the role of the PMO for your exam. It's all there on page 81 and page 82 of the Agile Practice Guide. Let's go to our next one. This one I decided to add to the mix because I felt it was missing and it's a topic relative estimating. So whether you're using dogs or you're using story points, Fibonacci, whatever you're using, it's important that you are aware that this is just one tiny little tool in the box, but you could get it on the exam. Relative estimating consists of estimating tasks or user stories by comparison or by grouping of items of equivalent difficulty. For those of you getting ready for the exam and a lot of these terms, you're stuck, you're feeling overwhelmed, well, just read them up. Or maybe you should just go on down to agileprinciple.com, sign up for training that we've got for this at agileprinciple.com. We cover these terms in a lot more depth and our awesome instructor, Roy, he will cover this with you. Refactoring. Refactoring consists of improving the internal structure of an existing program source code while preserving its external behavior. And that was refactoring. Let's go to our next one, retrospective. Retrospectives on a regular basis at the end of each sprint, weekly or biweekly, a retrospective allows for the team to reflect and adjust practices any team member can voice a problem or propose a solution. So just to double back down, that is refactoring. I should probably have read you PMI's definition of it as well. So let me read that because I got tangled up in the progress. So let me do that refactoring according to the world of the PMI, a product quality technique whereby the design of a product is improved by enhancing its maintainability and other desired attributes without altering its expected behavior. And then we talked about the retrospective. There actually is a lot more to say about a retrospective. And let me touch on the PMI's definition. It says a regularly occurring workshop in which participants explore their work and results in order to improve both process and product. But why don't we go a little step further and talk about the retrospective from the perspective of none other than the Scrum Guide. It's known as a sprint retrospective in the Scrum Guide. And the purpose of the retrospective, it reads, is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. The Scrum team inspects how the last sprint went with regards to individuals, interactions, processes, tools, and their definition of done. Don't you like the way they slid in that manifesto line? Classic. Inspected elements often vary with the domain of work. Assumptions that led to them astray, that led them astray, are identified and their origins explored. The scrum team discusses what went well during the sprint, what problems it encountered, and how those problems were or were not solved. It sounds like a lessons learned. The only difference here is that we have a term we call Agile Vegas. Whatever happened in Vegas stays there. No blame games, no crazy documentation floating around the company that Phil messed up the code, none of that. We keep everything within the retrospective. The sprint retrospective concludes the sprint. It's, it's time-boxed to a maximum of three hours for a one-month sprint for shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. And you do know that Scrum is pretty prescriptive about some things. And that's why if you read the Scrum Guide at scrumguides.org, you realize that there's a little bit more depth into their definition there. All right, let's go to rolling wave planning. Rolling wave planning is an iterative planning technique in which the work to be accomplished in the near term is planned in detail, while the work in the future is planned at a higher level. 
Let's move on to our next one in the Agile Practice Guide, Scaled Agile Framework Safe. And it reads, a knowledge base of integrated patterns for enterprise scale lean agile development. If you want to know our perspectives on this, you want to look out for a video by my buddy Roy and I. Just Google Agile Principle, Roy and Uncut. You'll hear our opinion on this. Let's move on to Scrum. Scrum is an agile framework for developing and sustaining complex products with specific roles, events, and artifacts. Scrum board. Scrum board is not mentioned here in the agile practice guide, but perhaps it is on the next page. Okay, agile practice guide, give us what you got. It says, an information radiator that is utilized to manage the product and sprint backlogs and show the flow of work and its bottlenecks. Now I included a definition because at the time I had not picked up that one in the Agile Practice Guide. There's quite a lot in here. But the definition I have reads, it's a tool that helps teams make sprint backlog items visible. So it's not incorrect to say it's a, a radiator, information radiator, but you got to understand what it really is. It makes those sprint backlog items visible. The board can take many physical and virtual forms, but it performs the same function regardless of how it looks. The board is updated by the team and shows all items that need to be completed for the current sprint. And a shout out to our friend Jeff for that definition, Jeff Sutherland. All right, let's move on to our next one, the Scrum Master. This is another one that I want to double down on, and this is in the Scrum Guide in a lot of detail. It reads, the Scrum Master is accountable for establishing Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. They do this by helping everyone understand Scrum theory and practice, both within the Scrum team and organization. The Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum team's effectiveness. They do this by enabling the Scrum team to improve its practices within the Scrum framework. Scrum Masters are true leaders who serve the Scrum team and the larger organization. The Scrum Master serves the Scrum team in several ways, including coaching, helping the Scrum team focus on creating high value increments that meet the definition of done causing the removal of impediments, ensuring that all Scrum events take place and are positive, productive, and kept within the time box. The Scrum Master serves the product owner in several ways, including helping find techniques for effective product goal definition and product backlog management, helping the Scrum team understand the need for clear and concise backlog items, helping establish empirical product planning for a complex environment. So the summary, there's so many lines to read through. It's that the Scrum Master helps out so many individuals and the team in a variety of ways. It also reads here, the Scrum Master serves the organization in several ways, including leading, training, and coaching the organization in its Scrum adoption, planning and advising Scrum implementations within the organization and helping employees and stakeholders understand and enact an empirical approach for complex work and removing barriers between stakeholders and Scrum teams. What a lot of work for the Scrum Master. Let's move on to our next one, Scrum of Scrums. The Scrum of Scrums is a scaled agile technique that offers a way to connect multiple teams who need to work together to deliver complex solutions. It helps teams develop and deliver complex products through transparency, inspection, and adaption at scale. We can also look at this as a technique to scale Scrum up to larger groups over a dozen people. You know, Scrum is very particular about numbers, but if you wanna scale up Scrum and use a Scrum of Scrums, a technique to scale Scrum up to large groups over a dozen people consisting of dividing the groups into agile teams of five to 10. 
Each daily scrum within a sub team ends by designating one member as ambassador to participate in a daily meeting. Now, I know you want to get off this call really quick, so let me just finish the definition. Let's read from the Agile Practice Guide. It reads, a technique to operate Scrum at scale for multiple teams working on the same product, coordinating discussions of progress for their interdependencies, and focusing on how to integrate the delivery of software, especially in areas of overlap. So you want to scale Scrum up, Scrum of Scrums. Now, there's, there's so much to talk about regarding the Scrum of Scrums, but I couldn't help putting in this one about the resolution of impediments. The resolution of impediments is expected to focus on the challenges of coordination between the teams. Solutions may entail agreeing to interfaces between teams, negotiating responsibility boundaries, and so on. The Scrum of Scrums will track these items via a backlog of its own, where each item contributes to improving between team coordination. All right, let's move on. The Scrum Team. This is a self-organizing team, of course, with an empowered product owner. These agile teams are composed of peers who share ownership of the team's work and decision-making pro process. Self-organizing teams in Scrum are given ownership of their own work process, their commitments, and their approach to meeting their commitments. The product owner is the role in the Scrum that represents the business. Of course, as you know, we've spoken about that. But again, I cannot help but give you Ken and Jeff's definition. So let's go for a quick run of it. The fundamental unit of Scrum is a small team of people, a Scrum team. The Scrum team consists of one Scrum master, one product owner, and developers. Within a Scrum team, there are no sub-teams or hierarchies. It is a cohesive unit of professionals focused on one objective at a time, the product goal. Scrum teams are cross-functional, meaning that members have all the skills necessary to create value each sprint. They are also self-managing, meaning they internally decide who does what, when, and how. The Scrum team is small enough to remain nimble and large enough to complete significant work within a sprint. Typically, now watch this, this is from the November edition of the Scrum Guide 2020, typically 10 or fewer people. So they've kind of cut that number. In general, we have found that smaller teams communicate better and are more productive. If scrum teams become too large, they should consider reorganizing into smaller cohesive scrum teams, each focused on the same product. Sounds like less, doesn't it? Yes, it does. All right, let's move on, my friends. We are almost done with this. I know you're itching to get off the call. Let's talk about scrum ban. Scrum ban is talked about here just like the other methods. And Scrum Ban is a combination of two things, Scrum and Kanban. And it reads here, a management framework that emerges when teams employ Scrum as the chosen way of working and use the Kanban method as a lens through which to view, understand, and continuously improve how they work. All right, we've talked about quite a lot of this stuff already, self-organizing teams. We've talked about this. It is a team, a cross-functional team, in which people fluidly assume leadership as needed to achieve the team's objectives. It's nothing like organic leadership, and that happens in a self-organizing team. Next one is servant leadership, the practice of leading through service to the team by focusing on understanding and addressing the needs and development of team members in order to enable the highest possible team performance. Now, excuse me as I give you the 10 core tenets of servant leadership. Listening, empathy, healing, self-awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, 
commitment to growth of people, of the team, and lastly, building community. Let's move to our next definition. It's service request manager. The service request manager, they manage the overall help desk activities. They take the overall responsibility for service request handling on the service desk. Of course, PMI has the little slant on it. It says the person responsible for ordering service requests to maximize value in a continuous flow or Kanban environment, equivalent to product owner. Siloed organization, an organization structured in such a way that it only manages to contribute a subset of the aspects required for delivering value to customers. Single loop learning, the practice of attempting to solve problems by just using specific predefined methods without challenging the methods in light of experience. Smoke testing. In computer programming and software testing, smoke testing is preliminary testing to reveal simple failures severe enough to reject a prospective software release. Smoke testing is also viewed as a way of deducing if the software build is stable or not. And it consists of a minimal set of tests run on each build to test software functionalities. The PMI call this a set of lightweight tests to ensure that the most important functions of the system under development work as intended. You get the picture. Next, we have specification by example. This is a collaborative approach to defining requirements and business oriented functional tests for software products based on capturing and illustrating requirements using realistic examples instead of abstract statements. The PMI also have their spin on this, a collaborative approach to defining requirements and business-oriented functional tests. And the key word there is realistic examples. Let's go on to our next one, spike. The PMI simply defines it as a short time interval within a project, usually of fixed length during which a team conducts research or prototypes, an aspect of a solution to prove its viability. Sprint, a time box iteration in Scrum. Sprint planning, a collaborative event in Scrum in which the team, the Scrum team plans the work for the current sprint. Now you do know, as usual, I would like to introduce you to the Scrum Guide's definition and it reads, sprint planning initiates the sprint by laying out the work to be performed for the sprint. The resulting plan is created by the collaborative work of the entire Scrum team. The product owner ensures that attendees are prepared to discuss the most important product backlog items and how they map to the product goal. The Scrum team may also invite other people to attend sprint planning to provide advice. So there are topics to be covered here and they are as follows. One, why is this sprint valuable? Two, what can be done this sprint? Three, how will the chosen work get done? For each selected product backlog items, the developers plan the work necessary to create an increment that meets the definition of done. And this is done by decomposition of product backlog items into smaller work items of one day or less. How this is done is at the sole discretion of the developers. Now, when we say developers, we're not saying you have to be in software to do this. We're talking about the people who get the work done. The sprint goal, the product backlog items selected for the sprint, plus the plan for delivering them are together referred to as the sprint backlog. Sprint planning is time boxed to a maximum of eight hours for a one month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. So we've talked about the sprint backlog in the past and there is sprint planning now showing on the screen. 
So all along, I've been talking about sprint planning and you probably got the picture. And this is where we include, of course, the whole team in the activities I described. Sprint review. The sprint review is a ceremony at the end of each sprint when completed stories are demonstrated to the team. And to indulge further, let's talk about the scrum guide and the sprint review here, it reads, the purpose of the sprint review is to inspect the outcome of the sprint and determine future adaptations. The scrum team presents the results of their work to key stakeholders and progress, progress towards the product goal is discussed. During the event, the scrum team and stakeholders review what was accomplished in the sprint and what has changed in the environment. Based on this information, attendees collaborate on what to do next. The product backlog may also be adjusted to meet new opportunities. The sprint review is a working session and the scrum team should avoid limiting it to a presentation. The sprint review is the second to the last event of the sprint and is time boxed to a maximum of four hours for a one month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. All right, and that's a sprint review. We're almost getting to the end now. Story point. Now, contrary to what a lot of people think, the untrained eye thinks a story point means duration. No, it does not. So don't fall into that trap. The story point is a unitless measure used in relative user story estimating techniques. Sustainable pace. This is not in the Agile Practice Guide, but I decided to add it because the term sustainable pace comes up quite a lot and we see it in the manifesto. The team aims for a work pace that they would be able to sustain indefinitely, that sustainable pace. In other words, a sustainable velocity over a time period. Swarming. Swarming occurs when many team members, as many as possible, work simultaneously on the same priority item and they work on just that one until it is done. The PMI defines this as a technique in which multiple team members focus collectively on resolving a specific impediment. Let's go to our next definition, task board. Now you do not find this in the Agile Practice Guide, but a task board is really synonymous with Kanban. We divide the task board into three columns to do, doing, done, or to do in progress and done. And cards are placed in the columns to reflect the current status of that task. Honestly, the Kanban board is one of the best inventions for personal work getting done. I can testify to that. Wrote 12 books with a Kanban board. Technical debt. It's coming down to the wire now, my friends. Technical debt. PMI refers to this as the deferred cost of work not done at an earlier point in the product life cycle. You know you're in debt when you know you did it and it kind of works, but you know it wasn't done the right way. You're in debt. You Got to go back, fix it. Test-driven development, also known as TDD, is a style of programming in which three activities are tightly interwoven, coding, testing, and design in the form of refactoring. This is where we write automated tests before writing or creating the product. And it actually helps people design and mistake proof the product. The PMI's definition here reads a technique where tests are defined before work begins so that work in progress is validated continuously, enabling work with a zero defect mindset. The next is time box, a fixed period of time, for example, two weeks, three weeks, one month. The next one is T-shaped scales. We've beaten this one to a pulp on this one because not only have we talked about T-shaped, we've talked about I-shaped, paint drip, broken comb. That's enough, let's move on. User story. User story is well known in software development and it's an informal natural language description of features of a software system. They are written from the perspective of the end user. You typically see a story written such as, as a, whatever that role is, I would like, whatever that user would like, 
so that whatever that user story is meant to deliver. The PMI describes this briefly as a description of deliverable value for a specific user. It is a promise for a conversation to clarify details. Next, we have user story mapping, a visual practice for organizing work into a useful model to help understand the sets of high value features to be created over time, identify omissions in the backlog, and effectively plan releases that deliver value to users. Story mapping consists of ordering those user stories along two independent dimensions. The map arranges user activities along the horizontal axis in rough order of priority, or the order in which you would describe activities to explain the behavior of the system. We've already got three left, so hold on. We'll be done here shortly. UX design, UX user experience. User experience is about how a user interacts with and experiences a particular product, system, or service. It includes a person's perception of utility, ease of use, and efficiency. The PMI have their own little spin, the process of enhancing the user's experience by focusing on improving the usability and accessibility to be found in the interaction between the user and the product. Value stream. A value stream is the set of actions that take place to add value to a customer from the initial request through realization of value by the customer. The value stream begins with the initial concept, moves through various stages of development, and on through delivery and support. PMI spin reads an organizational construct that focuses on the flow of value to the customers through the delivery of specific products or services. Last but not least, in the letter V is value stream mapping. Value stream mapping is a lean enterprise technique used to document, analyze, and improve the flow of information or materials required to produce a product or service for a customer. A value stream map displays all the important steps of your work process necessary to deliver value from start to finish. Value stream mapping is also known as material and information flow mapping. My friends, it's been quite an uphill task getting through over 110 plus, going to 120 definitions for this exam. You can see why the PMP exam is often referred to as a beast. So many definitions, we had 119 of them, but we got through, so congrats to you. For those of you who are getting ready for your exam, I want to advise you, why don't you go on down to the website, praiseon.com, that is gonna help you to be able to get into a course where you can learn all of this stuff, put around, really great videos, audio, books, and stuff like that. And the course I want to recommend to you, if you are looking for a self-study course with a few intermittent meetings to make sure you're on the right track, why don't you choose this one? It's called PMP Exam Prep Camp. And you can sign up for three months or six months. And if you need any additional content, you can see we've got quarterly mentoring for PMPs to help them with the PDUs, help their focus, help them to succeed. And then we, we have a barrage of products. If you hit that link, you're gonna see many, many more products. Great stuff that is gonna help you ace this exam, smack it in the jaw, get it off your back. All right, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to hit like. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe because next time I'm on, you definitely wanna join me, maybe as a PMP, who knows. See you in the next episode. You take care and bye for now.